Hey everybody, it's Mason Choate from hogbeat.com. The clip you're about to watch is from our weekly podcast, The Hogbeat Hour, that comes out on Fridays on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. It also streams live on ESPN Arkansas at 7 o'clock on Thursday nights. For more content from Hogbeat, go to hogbeat.com and get all the content you want on Arkansas athletics. You're listening to the Hog Beat Hour with Andrew Hutchinson, Alex Trader, and Mason Choate on ESPN Arkansas on HitThatLine.com. Now, here's your host, Mason Choate. Welcome to the Hog Beat Hour. Andrew Hutchinson, Mason Choate, and Alex Trader along with you today. Uh, not as busy as our usual episodes, but there's a lot going on with recruiting. We got Junior Day coming up this Saturday. Uh, we got some hoops talk for you later on in the episode. Arkansas loses to AM. We're not going to talk about that a whole lot. We're going to talk about the big win over Missouri, but we're going to start with recruiting today. So, Junior Day on Saturday, um, not just Junior Day, but there's with the college football season officially ending, there's a lot going on as far as transfer portal. We know Arkansas lost some pieces um, that they didn't expect to lose, at least we didn't expect them to lose. Um, to the transfer portal so now you have to regain those pieces so start with you Andrew Hutchinson let's talk about junior day this is a good opportunity for Arkansas with the 2023 class just what are your um, general thoughts so far yeah I mean they've got a, a pretty good list of prospects coming in we've got kind of a, a partial it's it's definitely not comprehensive but a pretty good list of some of the top prospects that are going to be coming to Fayetteville this weekend over on hogbeat.com on our uh, premium message board, uh, but there there is a pretty nice list, and I mean this is the the well most of these are 2023 kids, you know juniors guys that are going to be seniors this coming year, uh, but there are a couple of 2024s that are going to be here, guys that are sophomores, uh, but really this is the class we're going to see the impact of Arkansas's nine and four season. Uh, they, these are the kids that may not have considered Arkansas because what they remember are you know just really bad two and ten seasons and. They probably didn't think Arkansas was really worth going to or even checking out. And now Arkansas has got a foot in the door with these kids. And I think that's a, a really big deal. And, and Sam Pittman and crew have kind of gotten off to a really good start with that 2023 class. Uh, I haven't checked the last several days, but I know uh, after the most recent commitment in that class, they were up to like number five nationally, which so they're not going to have a number five class in the country, most likely. Uh, but, you know, it just shows you that they're off to a really good start with some you know top prospects i mean shamar easter is a four-star recruit in-state kid that could have gone anywhere but is here uh some of the other guys are 5.7 three stars those are high three stars on the verge of being four stars uh so it, it's a really solid foundation and now they're trying to kind of build on that by bringing in these, these top prospects get them on campus uh, i know that's something everyone says about arkansas is if you can get them on campus you've got a chance because not everyone thinks of Arkansas as this you know, wonderful place that we know it as. Uh, they probably think it's all oh, just a bunch of rednecks and it's the country and stuff like that. They've never actually seen Fayetteville and seen the campus and seen Northwest Arkansas. Uh, so getting them on campus is huge. Getting them to where they can be evaluated by the coaching staff. You know, there's a few guys that are coming in that don't actually have offers yet from Arkansas, but that could be in the works. Uh, so really big junior day, not just this weekend, but it's actually three straight weekends of junior days or prospect camps, whatever you want to call them, on the 15th, 22nd, and 29th of January. So really big, critical stretch of recruiting for Arkansas uh, for the 2023 class. So the, some of these 2023 guys, they're, they're pretty exciting. I know, Alex Trader, you're going to be out there this Saturday. You've kind of looked at a few of these guys. I know that you're not super – um, locked in on some of them, but are there any guys that you're kind of excited to watch, guys that you think would fit well here in Fayetteville? Yeah, I think it's impossible to say anyone other than being excited to see what Caleb James is going to do this weekend. He's, you know, committing later on in the week, um, and it kind of the timeline makes it seem as though Arkansas has a really good chance. They've been on, in on him for a while. I did put a future cast in for him a little bit back. Um, and I think Sam Pittman has really put a lot of effort into to, to grabbing him for, for this class. Like Hutch mentioned, it's a top five class right now. That doesn't really 
hold too much water just because it is so early on in the cycle. But anytime you can see Arkansas in that top five and you have five really solid guys, like you mentioned, Joey Sua is one that um, I'm really, you know, looking forward to seeing what he can do this season to maybe even move himself up into that four-star class because he does have some really nice footwork as an offensive lineman. Um, you've seen a couple of guys, Charles Jagusa, uh, Chon Davian Bradley, who have also been here before and seeing those repeat visitors is definitely a good sign for Arkansas. Hutch, you kind of focus on this more than most people do, but positions of need for Arkansas, um, we they've kind of – I mean, they've got some in the 2022 class that they still got to lock down, probably going to hit the portal for those. But 2023, just looking ahead to guys that are going to leave after this next season, what are some positions that you can think of that Arkansas might target more heavily than others? Well, I think the cliche answer here uh, would be quarterback because that's such an important uh, position every year. However, throw in the fact that Arkansas did not sign one in 2022 uh, remains to be seen if they may try to add one out of the portal kind of as a depth piece behind KJ Jefferson. But the whole strategy was, hey, we're not going to sign one in 2022 because we think that's going to help us with some big time prospects in the 2023 class. So uh, really anxious to see kind of what they do there. You know, Avery Johnson is a high three-star from Kansas uh, who's, who's visited before, and it sounds like he's going to be back for a junior day uh, this month. Uh, they're on some other big-time guys uh, that, that are, are really, really good. I think Jackson Arnold's one from Texas, uh, you know, Vic Sutton from Mississippi. Those are that's – that's a critical, critical spot, and, and really – uh, could be the most important position from the you know future of the, uh, the program standpoint, just because that's such an important uh, position and they really don't have a ton of proven depth at that spot right now. Uh, of course, that doesn't help you in the 2022 season, uh, but at least it gives you something uh, to build around in the future. Uh, other than that, you know, it's pretty much every year you're going to want to bring in, you know, a really solid group of offensive linemen. And with Sam Pittman as the head coach, that's kind of what we've come to expect is, Hey, this guy's going to recruit offensive linemen. It may not have been as good as maybe what people expected because people remember the Denver Kirkland, Dan Skipper class that, that came in uh, when, when Sam Pittman's first year as an offensive line coach back in 2013, he hasn't quite done that yet, but he has brought in some really solid prospects uh, and I think that's going to continue. And it's just kind of steadily gotten better uh, as, as he's been here longer. And I think this 2023 class could be the first time we say, okay, this is a Sam Pittman offensive line group. Uh, you know, Alex mentioned Joey Sua. He's already committed as an in-state kid, uh, but not a, I guess a, a true in-state kid. He's a move in uh, to the Bentonville area. Uh, then you've also got, you know, Charles Jagusa. That's a, a, a four-star kid. Uh, they've got uh, Kobe Keenum as one. I don't know if he has a, an offer from Arkansas yet, but he seems to be, uh, I think he actually does. He, he uh, has tweeted some, ex he was one of the recruits that was tweeting some excited things, you know, during the Outback Bowl. He's a high three-star offensive lineman. Uh, this is so early in the cycle that these guys that are 5.7 three-stars could e easily see the bump up to four-star uh, classification. So uh, that's another spot that I'm, I'm anxious to see kind of what Sam Pittman, uh, Cody Kennedy, and that group of, of offensive coaches can put together on the offensive line because that's, as we know, and as we saw in the national championship game this past week, that's a very vital position on the football field. I feel like we probably should have led with this, but just kind of explain exactly what junior days is for Arkansas and what, what they'll be doing um, this weekend and the next few weekends. Yeah, junior days is something that uh, programs cross country do. They generally, during the uh, – I guess technically this is the winter or spring of uh, the season uh, of the year. They bring in prospects for the upcoming class because at this point, most of the 2022 classes is pretty much done. I mean, most schools across the country sign a lot of their players during the early signing period. Uh, even in the past, before the early signing period, they had them all committed and they started kind of turning the page to 2023 and, or to the following class. And, and for that year, for this year, it's 2023. Uh, these are guys that they want to get an extra look at, um, you know, several of these guys, you know, for example, a guy that I'm also excited to see how he does is CJ Turner, a uh, four-star athlete from star city an in-state kid does not have an offer from Arkansas yet. Doesn't have a whole lot of offers, uh, but clearly has really impressive film for the rivals evaluators to, to give him four-star status. 
you know, he's a guy that Arkansas coaches probably want to see what he looks like. Cause it's one thing to see what a guy does on film. It's another to see what he can do in person. You know, you get the kind of the eye test, see what they look like, see how they run. You can uh, put them through some drill type things. You know, they're, I don't think they're, they're not in full pads or anything like that, but you can you know, run routes, see quarterbacks throwing things like that. Uh, so it's just kind of an opportunity for coaches to evaluate talent and also an opportunity to have guys that already have Arkansas offers to come in, see the campus, you know, get talked up and pampered by the, the football coaches and told how great they are and how much they're, you know, wanted here at Arkansas. Uh, so it's just kind of another recruiting opportunity for the coaching staff, generally for the, the rising seniors, guys that are currently juniors. That's why they're called junior days. Uh, but you also have some, you know, sophomores mixed in there as well. All right, guys. Well, we're going to put a wrap on that. And then coming up next, we're going to talk about some portal targets for Arkansas. Hutch did a story about um, some guys that the Hogs could be targeting in the portal. Um, and then we're going to talk about some guys who have been on campus who might transfer to Arkansas or just looking around. Uh, Alex has done some big boards for some positions. We're going to talk more recruiting up next here on the Hogbeat Hour. You're listening to the Hog Beat Hour with Andrew Hutchinson, Alex Trader, and Mason Choate on ESPN Arkansas on HitThatLine.com. Now, here's your host, Mason Choate. All right, we're back here on the Hog Beat Hour continuing our recruiting talk. So we talked junior days, but now we're going to talk some transfer portal stuff. Hutch has been hitting it hard as good as he can. I mean, it's, it's a difficult game. It's new to almost everybody. Um, just the way that things are going. But Arkansas has some positions of need in the transfer portal, most of them on the defensive side of the ball, Hutch. So uh, let's just start with uh, the positions of need and maybe some guys that they're targeting. I know you have this story, 10 potential portal targets for Arkansas. So don't give everything away because we want people to go to hogbeat.com, but um, maybe get people excited to go read it on hogbeat.com. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got 10 guys listed, and one thing you'll notice is that all 10 guys are on the defensive side of the ball. I, I just get the feeling that that's kind of where Arkansas is going to be targeting guys. We've seen that based on the guys they've offered so far. I mean, they've got a couple of defensive tackles that have already put them in uh, their five, top four, top five. You know, Jackson Player from Tulsa, I know we've talked about him on the show before. Uh, Makai Wingo. Uh, from uh, Missouri is also a guy that has them in the top four. Uh, Arkansas would, would definitely like to add at least one of those guys, I would imagine. And if both of them want to come, honestly, I say bring them on. You, you can't be – Arkansas is not in a position to be turning down talented defensive tackles. And I think both of those guys are capable of playing for Arkansas. I mean, especially Wingo. I mean, he was freshman All-SEC this year at Missouri. So he's proven that he can play in the SEC. You know, Jackson Player has been incredibly productive at Tulsa, which is in the uh, American Athletic Conference, which is a really solid conference. I mean, we saw Cincinnati out of that conference make the college football playoff this year. Uh, so I think both those guys would be would be really good positions to Ar for Arkansas to add. Uh, but honestly, I would I could see them adding guys at all three levels of the of the defense. I could see them adding a linebacker. I could see them adding a secondary guy or two, whether it be a corner or a safety, or honestly, they'd probably prefer somebody that's versatile, somebody that can play corner, they can play safety, they can play nickel, uh, because they have, have lost Joe Fouché, Greg Brooks, Monteric Brown's going to the NFL draft. So there are positions to fill there, and they've got talented players on the roster, I think guys that they like. Uh, but if you could bring in a, a more veteran, experienced guy, uh, then I think they would do that in a heartbeat. Well, you mentioned you mentioned linebacker there, and I think big news of the week so far kind of overshadowed going into the Missouri game on Wednesday. Uh, linebacker from Alabama, Drew Sanders. It was rumored that he was on campus in Fayetteville. I don't know if we confirmed those rumors. I'm sure they were true, but um, if Arkansas could land a guy like that, that would be pretty big, Hutch. Yeah, that would be massive. I mean – he didn't play a ton at Alabama, but he was only there for two years. He did start three games as a sophomore this year. Uh, there were some injuries in front of him on the depth chart that allowed him to start. He played, you know, okay, uh, but he's a young guy, and he was obviously good enough to get recruited by Alabama, so I think that means something. Uh, and, you know, if he was on campus, which we've kind of heard, you know, from sources that, that indicated that he was, uh, nothing super concrete, but this is a guy – 
uh, I was reading from some stuff from our, our friends over at the Texas rival site, Orange Bloods, and they said that this guy, Drew, he, he is not, he's not much of a talker. He doesn't talk to the media. He said he's not sure if he's ever done an interview, uh, and I think he hadn't tweeted in like three or four years. So that kind of tells you kind of the personality he has, uh, which honestly might help Arkansas because that's kind of the personality of Sam Pittman, if you think about it. Sam Pittman's not a huge guy when it comes to look at me, uh, listen to what I have to say, uh, look at what I'm putting on Twitter. I mean, he does tweet, but I think it's basically because they have him, they, they make him because he's the head coach and he needs to kind of have a, a social media presence in this day and age uh, so I think he would be a, a good personality fit for, for Arkansas uh, Barry Odom's kind of a similar similar type guy uh, Michael Scherer is too the linebackers coach so he would be a, a tremendous add I know he was uh, everyone refers to him as a, a former five-star recruit he was actually a 6.0 four-star recruit on Arkansas but a top 50 prospect or on rivals top 40 prospects. Uh, so he would be a, a massive, massive ad for Arkansas if they can get it done. Uh, sounds like he was going to be visiting Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas on consecutive days. So it sounds like a decision will be coming sooner rather than later. Uh, but again, I'm not exactly sure how he's going to announce it if he's not a big social media guy. I guess we're just going to have to kind of wait and see how that goes. Now, before we move forward, because we do want to talk about the, the big boards that Alex has put together for running back and tight end, uh, Hutch, I want to ask you, you, you've kind of done a little bit of a deep dive on what Arkansas could do with the quarterback depth. Um, there's a couple different options that they could go to. Maybe which one are you confident that they might go to? I, I feel like it's kind of a crapshoot. but um, And then if it is the portal, are there any names that you know of? Yeah, so the reason they need depth at the quarterback spot is because obviously Malik Hornsby has transferred out and Cade Renfro tore his ACL during bowl practices, so he's going to be out for a while. That leaves you with two quarterbacks, K.J. Jefferson, which thankfully is really, really good, and then obviously uh, Lucas Coley. But you need someone else. Uh, I think the most obvious kind of solution would be moving Landon Rogers back to quarterback. He was moved to tight end during fall camp. They like what he can bring to the team as a tight end. Uh, they talked about even him playing on defense. He's just a really good athlete, really good size, but he does have a cannon for an arm. So maybe he plays quarterback this spring and moves back during the fall when they get somebody else on campus. I could see them adding a, a preferred walk-on. You know, They've got a few guys that, that could be walk-on candidates. I've got those mentioned in the story. You can go check that out. And, yeah, they could add somebody in the portal, but don't get your hopes up. It's not going to be a Caleb Williams. It's probably not going to be a Jackson Dart. It's not going to be one of these high-profile guys. It's probably going to be somebody who's willing to come in and be a backup for a year or two, and that's not going to be a high-profile guy. So uh, I've got some names that I'm just kind of speculating on uh, over on, on the trough on, on hogbeat.com, but nothing that's, like, super, like, okay, this guy is a guy Arkansas could go add. Uh, it's kind of a kind of a crapshoot, as you said, as far as who they might be able to bring in uh, as a quality backup or depth piece that can maybe compete with Lucas Coley uh, for the number two job. All right, real quick before we get before we get to Alex, Alex, I know that you're just foaming at the mouth, ready to talk. But uh, Joe Fouché commits to LSU. Um, we got to mention that former Arkansas defensive back. I feel like we can assume Greg Brooks is next, but Hutch, just like real, real quick, what are your thoughts on that? Most predictable transfer destination imaginable. I mean, from New Orleans, probably grew up cheering for LSU, didn't get the opportunity out of high school, so he went somewhere where he could face LSU in Arkansas. Now, with LSU needing bodies, they were down to 39 scholarship players uh, in their bowl game. They need bodies. They need bodies in the secondary. They lost a ton of guys back there. And he's a veteran guy with, you know, multiple years of starting experience in the SEC and the SEC West. So really a, a, an obvious, you know, destination for him, obvious pickup for LSU. And as you said, it would not surprise me if they you know, go after Greg Brooks, that, that he would also follow him to LSU. All right, Alex. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, you had your big board for the running backs go out and you continued the series with your big board for tight ends in the 2023 class. So um, I guess just start with the running backs and give us a little uh, look into your big board. 
Yeah, so given how well the Razorbacks have recruited the tight end and running back positions over the last, or I guess in the 2022 cycle, these are actually pretty light. Um, probably the two two of the lighter ones that we'll have um, on the site, but I think there's one really, really clear target at running back, and that's Cedric Baxter. He's a top hundred, uh, Rivals 100 player. Um, has expressed interest in Arkansas, included them in his top uh, seven on New Year's, and um, I, I think that's that's kind of the end all be on the class. He's the guy you really want to go after, especially you brought in you brought in uh, Rashad Dubinian and um, and James Joyner in this last class. You have that kind of monster in the backfield already that we saw this season. Um, you really want to bring in a top level guy like Baxter, another guy um, out of Alabama, Drew Pickett would be a, a target. And then there is someone just down the road. Uh, in Little Rock, um, Darian Bennett, who doesn't yet have an offer from Arkansas, was initially supposed to commit sometime in January, uh, and that I'm not sure if that's still the case. It looks like his only offer is still from SMU. So um, you you really want to take a look at what's going on there, and if that's a take for Arkansas, should that time come? Um, I, I just think it's it's a really interesting how they want to balance this class. You've got the linemen like Hutch was talking about. You need the defensive guys. Um, and how much of that do you want to spend on uh, positions where you're super, super heavy already, like running back, um, like tight end? I think there's one guy in the, in the rest of the tight end class that they've offered that you take, and, and that's Luke has. Um, the Oklahoma D commit was really strong on Arkansas before he committed to Oklahoma, um, included them in his top schools with the likes of Ohio State and, and um, Oklahoma State, USC. Um, just really, really talented guy, and you definitely want to make sure that uh, if if that's a guy who's wanting to come to Arkansas, you probably don't tell him no, um, given the talent that he can provide. Now, I, I know that you have a wide receiver big board coming out soon, but uh, you're not – fully complete with it yet just maybe a couple names that you're thinking about that you've been looking at closely for Arkansas in the 2023 class because we know that um, with Traylon Burks gone it's kind of like well who's going to be the number one guy this next year we think it might be Jaden Hazelwood but they're going to need more people to come in after this next year yeah I'm still going through and, and, and making sure of of who I think the top targets are it's always tough because wide receivers Everyone needs them, and, and those top, top-level guys, you've got every school coming after. You can have the depth there and still be able to, to keep guys happy and generally keep them from transferring out. So um, I'm definitely going to have those names in the big board that comes out Monday, and we can talk about it next week uh, as I kind of get those names locked down. I think Anthony Evans right now is a great start. He's got really, really nice speed, enjoys blocking, which you don't always see with receivers. You kind of see him – take take charge and dominate that aspect of his game um and i just that's a big pickup and a big start for kenny guyton and i'm excited to see uh what all he's able to do next uh, as people try to kind of narrow down their list of schools and where they're going to visit and, and who all they're looking at i'm definitely wanting to see uh some of those bigger names on arkansas's radar radar especially uh, after um what we saw with Traylon burks this year well, we all know that with uh, Sam Pittman at the helm, recruiting is going to be a big thing, something that you got to follow closely. And uh, Arkansas is doing a good job. Hopefully they continue to do a good job. Um, but that's going to wrap it up for our recruiting talk here on the Hogbeat Hour. Coming up next, we're going to talk basketball. Arkansas gets a huge win over Missouri. Um, we'll we'll kind of hit on the A&M loss, but mostly Missouri talking moving forward. They play LSU this Saturday. We're going to hit all that here on the Hogbeat Hour. <laughs> 